All right, Jessica and Eric, this is Mr. Vanderveen. Uh, I apologize because I was maybe try to push things to the limit too much, and our recording device that we use uh, to record our lectures had gone two days without charging, and I kind of wanted to see if it could make it through a third day, and it didn't. So for uh, lesson 17 here, John decreases, uh, putting together this recording so that you guys can still have a, a good Bible lesson. Um, so, John decreases, we we'll also call it John is put into prison here, but uh, after John the Baptist uh, baptized Jesus, you might think that John completely went away, but that's not the case. We read here in John chapter 3, so that's where we're starting here, uh, John chapter 3, and in verse is 22 and 23 and 24, we see that uh, John continued to teach and preach even after Jesus uh, began his ministry. So verse 22 of John 3, After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Anon, near to Salem, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized, for John was not yet cast into prison. So we see there that they're working both pretty close by. Another thing we see from that verse is that John is not yet cast into prison. So we're being told he will be in prison. We'll see what that's all about. So Jesus uh, will take over for John here. He will be the main. So John needs to decrease. So we're going to see how that happens. Because in the situation of John the Baptist, there were many followers of John. Just like in this life, uh, sadly, many people become followers of a certain uh, maybe sports figure or a movie star or a great singer, and they follow them uh, to a fault. Even if that person begins to uh, live in sin or in, fall into faults, uh, they kind of blindly uh, turn a blind eye to those, and they shouldn't be doing that. So uh, we'll see that here with the followers of John. They weren't turning a blind eye to anything, but uh, they should be following Jesus, not John. John's going to point that out to them. So, uh, We'll read that here. There arose in verse 25. There, then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is this, my joy, therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard, that he testifieth. No man receiveth his testimony. We stop there, so we see a few things. Uh, John's disciples were jealous. They were hurt that so many were following after Jesus. And so they went to him and, Master, Rabbi, to John, uh, all these people are leaving. All of them are following. This isn't any good. Master, we, we want to follow you. They should continue following you. And Jesus had to teach them. And so that's what he taught them. Jesus is the bridegroom. Jesus has come, and it is he that is married here. And just like at a wedding, uh, and I asked some of the students here, when you have a wedding, I'm sure you've maybe been to a few, maybe even over there in Singapore, and I don't know what the customs are, but you have standing up in the front, you have the bride on one side, and you have the groom on the other. And then you might have some people standing off to the side. And at that wedding, who is the person that stands right next to the groom. In general, that would be what we call the best man. And that's what John is saying is here. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly. John is comparing himself to the best man. He's the last Old Testament prophet. He's the one who is, has come to and has made the way possible for Jesus to come. He has prepared that way. So John is just merely a friend of the bridegroom, just an earthly man who prepares the way. But yet it gives John great joy to do that work. And now, John says, I must decrease. I have to go into the background. That would not happen on its own. These men still would have continued to follow John. So God is 
and sovereign control here. He is working. It is his plan. And so here John is going to have to be put into prison so that the followers will leave John and go follow Jesus. Now we also know that in the future that won't happen completely because many men bring messages to John while he is in prison. So they must still be following him and still outside of his jail cell. But here we read of King Herod's sins. And so to do that we need to turn to uh, Luke chapter 3. Go back to uh, Luke chapter 3 here, verses 19 and 20. And I'll read those. But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, added yet this above all, that he shut up John in prison. Okay. And then uh, we also have an account of that if we turn to uh, Matthew, I believe, chapter 14, verses 3, 4, and 5. Turn there, Matthew chapter 14, yes. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him a prophet. What's interesting is how both Matthew and Luke say that Herodias is his brother's wife. So we have to go back in history. We have Herod the Great. And Herod the Great probably had multiple wives. I don't know if Herod uh, Philip here and Herod Antipas, if they are uh, full brothers or just half brothers, but either uh, way, they are sons of Herod the Great. And uh, Herod Antipas is in Judea, and Herod Philip is uh, must have been over in Rome. And while uh, Herod Antipas went to visit Rome, he saw the beautiful Herodias. She was already married. She was married to his brother Philip. And Herod Antipas wanted Herodias for his own wife, so he must have talked her into it, convinced her to come with him and become his wife. And Herod, of course, Antipas already had another wife, so she, he put her aside, and he takes here Herodias. So... What's interesting there is Matthew and Luke both say Herodias is Philip's wife because in the eyes of God, that's who she really belongs to. She's really Philip's wife. But anyways, he has divorced. Herod Antipas here has divorced his first wife and taken Herodias as a wife. And Herod Philip has lost his wife. We don't read anything more if he remarried, at least here in the scriptures. So they go back and they are living in sin. And John the Baptist pointed out those sins. He must have come before King Herod. We can imagine that meeting. Here's a man in camel's clothing uh, who eats locust and honey. He's hairy. And he comes in front of uh, Herod Antipas, this man probably on a royal throne, full of gold and wearing a kingly robe. And he comes before him and begins to tell Herod Antipas about his sins. That chief sin here being that he has taken Herodias as his own wife when it's not his but we see here, if we go back to uh, Luke, uh, but Herod for and for uh, Herod the Tetrarch reproved him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done. So other things too. And of course, we don't like hearing about sin. We don't like it when our pastor says off the pulpit and tells us about our sin, or our parents talk to us about our sin, or our teacher, or anyone else tells us now, Son or daughter, this is sin. Young child, this is sin. We don't like that. Herod Antipas didn't like that either. So he uh, was upset. He didn't want to hear this. And as king, of course, he could get his way. He would not repent. He did not want to repent. He didn't have true sorrow in his heart. He loved living this life of sin with Herodias, his beautiful wife. He loved the wicked things that he had done. So, of course, Herod Antipas here, for Herodias's sake. So Herodias has a hand in all of this. She too doesn't like hearing it and probably scolds her husband and tells him, whatever you do, get rid of this man. Because we know from later on in the Bible stories that his wife will tell him, we're talking about Herod here, to cut off his head on a silver platter. And of course, that's exactly what will happen to John. But here, 
Herodias has a hand because he does this for Herodias' sake. It's because of her that he puts her into prison. Now, he also probably would have killed him here. But what kept Herod from killing John? Yes, it's the fact that we read there. If we go back to uh, Matthew, and we see there that uh, and he would have put him to death. He feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. Because of the great preaching that John the Baptist had done, he had many followers. And so the whole town would have rose up in an uprising and there would have been a demonstration against Herod because of his putting John to death. So he knew better. He knew that it was wise not to. But we also know that it was God's purpose. God, again, is sovereignly controlling all things. And so... John needs to go into prison. God is not yet calling John home to be with him in heaven. He will soon, but not at this time. But his John's ministry as preacher in the wilderness and as one who baptized the people is done. He's in prison. He can still maybe through those windows and walls and maybe in prison preach and teach the people, but John's work is done. It is time for him to decrease. His work as forerunner of Christ and to baptize Christ is done. He pointed out the Lamb of God. And now it's time for John to decrease. Room must be made for the Messiah. So here is the last Old Testament prophet ready to be done. And we can see now that the way will be made possible for Christ to begin his ministry and John to begin to fade away. So that's lesson 17 here about John decreasing. We'll finish there. John is in prison. We will come back to that at a different time. But we'll see next time how Jesus begins his ministry. He has to go back to Cana of Galilee, but first we'll stop in Samaria and teach us about the Gentiles.